My name is Anna and I'm from Ukraine. But a couple of centuries ago I would say my name is Anna of Ukraine. And there is another Anna of Ukraine, Anna of Kyiv, who was also the Queen of France. And as a woman and as Anna, I'm extremely interested in her biography. Plus, her biography also tells us a lot about the level of life and education in medieval Kyiv Rus. On the 19th of May 1051, Anna, the youngest daughter of the Prince of Kyiv Rus, Yaroslav the Wise, ascended the French throne as the wife of a French king, Henry I. Her father has two very interesting nicknames. First, Yaroslav the Wise, which describes him as a very smart person who invested a lot in the education of Kyiv Rus people. Second, he was known as the father-in-law of Europe. Why? Because he, his children and his relatives were married to lots of princes and princesses from different corners of the world. Honestly, it is impossible for me to memorize all of the marriages that were organized by Yaroslav, so let me quote. He himself was married to Ingegert, the daughter of the Swedish king. His sister Maria married the Polish prince. Son Ila was married to the sister of the Danish king. Son Svetoslav married the Austrian princess. Son Vsevolod married the daughter of the Byzantine emperor. Son Igor, the German princess. Yaroslav married his daughter Anastasia to the Hungarian king, daughter Elizabeth to the Norwegian king, and his daughter Anna married King Henry I of France. Anna was born in 1024. Approximately, we can never be sure with the dates that are so far in history. And she received perfect education at the court. Why? Because Yaroslav paid much attention to knowledge and education of people. His daughter studied mathematics, writing, she knew a number of foreign languages, including Greek, she knew how to write in Cyrillic and Glagolitic alphabets, she was introduced to dancing, drawing, and she was extremely educated in general. In the times when an ordinary European royal, man, let alone women, was not able to write his name. Before I continue, I would like to remind all of us and myself that back in that time marriages were political. So in 1048 a French embassy arrived to Kyiv. They were looking for a new wife for their king Henry I. He was twice widowed by that time and needed an alliance with someone not related to him. Why? Because Pope prohibited marriages between close relatives that were so popular among European royals. And Anna of Kyiv turned out to be a perfect candidate. In 1051 she arrived to France and in May of the very same year they got married. Anna traveled with lots of possessions. And according to one legend, together with her she had a gospel. This was a very old and meaningful book that she loved a lot. Later it became a part of Reims Museum and was known as Reims Gospel. And lots of French kings, including Louis XIV, took oaths on this gospel, possibly from Kyiv Rus. Anna gave birth to four children, Philip, Anna, Robert and Hugo. And she was actually the one who brought Greek name Philip into French royal tradition. After the death of her husband, Henry I, she was offered to take up regency, but she declined, though she continued to be active in the life of the court. She lived next to Paris, remarried, and spent much time on the construction of convents and support of church. In 1074, she widowed for the second time and returned to the court of her son Philip, who was then a king of France already. And she actively participated in the life of a country and even signed a number of documents. 
This is perhaps the first record of Ukrainian language in historical documents. And she was literate back in the times when lots of royals from different royal families of Europe were only able to put cross next to her signature. And she signed herself as Anna Reina, which means Anna the Queen. Anna could ride a horse. She knew a lot about politics and was active in political and social life of France in the times of her husband's life and after his death. What is also interesting, and it is a unique example in French history, her husband signed lots of documents with a phrase in the consent of my wife Queen Anna or in the presence of my wife Queen Anna. So he wanted to stress that this decision was joint. We do not know the exact time of Anna's death, but it was close to 1075. She played an important role in political life of Europe. She was an extremely smart and educated woman. Her grave perhaps was destroyed as many royal graves during the times of French Revolution. But we have her letters and records about her in history. She exchanged correspondence with her father and often described France as a country that lacks education. She was one of the favorite queens and introduced manners, bathing and usage of spoon and forks into French court. One of my favorite facts from Queen Anna's biography is that together with her possessions, jewels and dresses, she brought a big library from Kiev to Paris. And not just brought these books, she actively read them and spread their ideas from Kiev Rus to medieval France. And this is another proof that Ukraine, in that time's Kiev Rus, was a strong medieval country and that our cultural heritage is interesting and worth discovering. Discover Ukraine. There are so many interesting facts and so many interesting personalities that tell a lot about our national character. I am proud to be Ukrainian, I am proud to be Ukrainian woman and today I am even proud to be Anna. Because Anna of Ukraine is a story that continues. Thank you so much for your support, for buying me coffees and becoming my patrons. But most importantly, thank you for supporting Ukraine. Ukraine is a country with thousands of years of history and hopefully with thousands of years of future. Slava Ukraini!